Uh, well, since I got snippy and pissy with Josh earlier, I'll stroke him for a little bit, okay? I'll do it. I'll do it. You're welcome. It's the least That's I could it's film. the least it's the <laughs> least I could do for being an ass. So <laughs> I love you, Dan. I know you do. <laughs> Hello, bots and listeners. Welcome to another special edition episode of The Fire Pit. I'm Josh, British name Reginald, and we are thrilled to have you join us on our Fourth selection section show. Selection section show. Say that three times fast. After walking the road to Independence Day and getting sauced on our sink or swim summer tour, the three of us embarked on a field trip to Kingtown, which came to a very conclusion, you know, a couple <laughs> days ago. That's a sentence. That's a sentence. <laughs> that is a very sentence. That is, yeah. It came to a, a conclusion um, with our last episode with It, Chapter One. And, uh, <clears throat> we have a very interesting six weeks ahead of us. We decided to take the next road and make it a little bit interesting as well. And to reveal where we're going. Because it was his idea. I'm going to turn things over to you, Thompson. Well, thank you, Reginald. And thank you for patting my ego on the head. It's greatly appreciated. I am Thompson, American name Tom, and for this oh-so-special journey, we had to come up with a special movie. See, this is a special occasion, one that just happens to come around right as we reach the destination of this next journey. Election Day! Now, this is an opportunity that comes only once every four years, and there is no guarantee that will have a destination timed so perfectly the next time. So obviously we could not pass this opportunity up. So put on your straw hats, campers, because we're going on the campaign trail. Now We acknowledge it's hot outside in every sense of the word. So we wanted to end this next coming journey on an optimistic, hopeful note. So with that in mind, we are aiming for a classic starring the original nicest guy in Hollywood. His career spanned nearly 50 years. He was a thespian, philanthropist, and a war hero. Of course, I'm talking about the one, the only, James Jimmy Stewart. And we'll be watching Jimmy Stewart in one of his most acclaimed roles, 1939's Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, one of the all-time classics in cinema. Now, we're still going to follow the rules of this journey. So we're going from It Chapter 1 to Mr. Smith Goes to Washington in six weeks. Again, just in time for Election Day. But to give us a recap of the fighter rules... And to tell us the layout of the selection selection section, wow, that is a hard thing to say. <laughs> I hand the mic over to the esteemed senator from Ohio, Nigel. Thank you, Thompson. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to getting to this classic. And uh, I am sorry that uh, selection section is such a hard thing to say on the script. I will work on that in the future. <laughs> no, because, it's it's ingrained into our blood now. Well, if yeah. we're all – well, you know what, though? We're, we're moving towards election day. We're on the campaign trail. Politicians make up words all the time, or they pronounce words wrong all the time, and that's this okay. This is the election section. Yes, it's, it's, it's no different than nuclear or I know the best words or <laughs> – uh, I do remember when he was vice president, Mr. Joe Biden, telling me that the number 12 reminded him of the number 47. And I still to this day have no idea how he got there because <laughs> 12 doesn't even go into 47. So anyways. Hey, if any of us have uh, proven in this podcast history, math is hard. Yeah, math is very, very hard. And apparently English isn't that easy either. So <laughs> that being said, I'm Dan. British name Nigel, and in order to get to this classic, we do have some rules. Now, those of you that are familiar with our format, and but hopefully we have some new listeners out there or anyone that needs a refresher, here's what we do. We choose a destination film, like It, 
that we just recently wrapped up, or Jaws, or our first one, which was Independence Day. We select this destination film, and then we select five movies that connect it via actor or actress. So it's very similar to the game Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, but Kevin Bacon's not the end goal. Like We don't pick Kevin Bacon movies. But every one of our movies in this series has to connect to our first episode. So we're going from It, which we just wrapped up a couple days ago, and hopefully you listened to yesterday, to Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. And we're following our own rules. We cannot reuse a movie we've watched before for at least a year. And we cannot repeat a connection during a six-part journey series. Which we're going to have to break that going out of Mr. Smith to our next destination film. Because all of the actors or actresses basically retired within the next 10 to 15 years after that movie. Yeah, it's really hard to get from 2017 to 1939. And it's going to be a lot of fun trying to get out of 1939. So... (laughs) <laughs> so I would I would like to talk a little bit about how we got there. Like as our longtime listeners know about, for our second selection section episode, I created an algorithm that was basically opening the dam and with possible uh, choices. So I'm just gonna get into a little bit of nerd speak here. For my algorithm this time, I had a few conditionals, and in order to get a diverse list sometime this century, because I could run it and get every single list and come up with literally tens of thousands of options. I have about a list of 100 movies that I wanted to use as kind of a filter. So only those 100 movies would be allowed to be used from each step in this journey. These movies include a bunch of the best and worst political movies, a few movies that are within one degree of it, and a few movies within one degree of Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. I did have a few of these degrees where the movies made after 1960 were either comedies or dramas and every option from the list it was didn't have to go through the list it was just any of those that fell into those categories so just i want to end this with code optimization is the best and worst thing about being a developer and for my part i want to thank coffee for being a fuel for me because i did this the old-fashioned way of three monitors up with seven different tabs each of IMDb pages well into the night. So like John Henry, I went up against the machine. No, I'm going to give you some kudos, Josh, one of my lists. I did kind of, thanks to your algorithm, help me out considerably, because otherwise it would just be a a one-lister for me. Getting from 2017 to 1939, when most of your actors were not born in the 20th (laughs) century, is hard. Very. (laughs) Thank you, Josh. Yes, for those in the audience unfamiliar with the classic film, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, it's a... Movie made in 1939, and Jimmy Stewart's still a young man in this movie. He plays a young senator, a fresh-faced junior senator that gets elected and goes to Washington. And he's surrounded by old fuddy-duddy senators and congressmen that make up the rest of the cast of the movie. So Jimmy Stewart's like a young man in this film, and everyone else around him is old. So if they were old in the 30s, it definitely lends you to say they weren't acting much longer past that. Yeah, most of those (laughs) actors were born when electricity was a novelty. (laughs) It was a challenge to get there. We had a really debate if this was going to be our movie, because (laughs) most of those actors that was opposite Jimmy Stewart were dead by the 1960s. Yes. And the ones that weren't were dead by the 1980s. Jimmy Stewart himself died in 97, with his last film being Fievel Goes West, where he played Wild Bill Hiccup. And also, again, this movie's 1939. It's only two years before the United States enters World War II. When they enter World War II, even Hollywood gets converted to help the war effort. So a lot of these actors don't act anymore after World War II because they either join the war or they just Hollywood had no use for him because it was all about the war effort at this time. So mm. it was really hard to get to Mr. Smith from it. And we bent some of our normal rules to get here. Some of us had, to, at least I know I had to share one of my lists with the team just to make sure it aligned. Because again, un- up until recently, we were very like, this is going to be tight. Ooh, boy. Yeah, yeah. And Josh's algorithm, which is lovely, by the way, it's a lovely algorithm. It came up with a list of 2,500 movies, or 20, it was 2,500 lists, I should say, of getting from it to Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. And so this selection section is going to be a little bit different than our normal ones because I got so frustrated and I literally made a list that was identical to Tom's before I got to the last movie where I'm like, this is Tom's list. This is the <laughs> same exact list Tom just presented. 
Mm-hmm. And I just threw my hands up and said, screw it. I'm presenting that one too. And then <laughs> Josh presented his algorithm finally after days, if not weeks, and him constantly spraying his computer with a fire extinguisher uh, came to the realization that, hey, I have 2,500 lists that you can go through. I parsed through all of them and I came up with a couple of different lists and Josh came up with a couple of different lists and Tom came up with some lists and we're all just functioning on coffee and cigarettes at this point. We're a lot like the senators in Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. There you go. We're functioning on just coffee and cigarettes right now. I, I feel like I've just been filibustering Congress for the last 48 hours. So, <laughs> But thankfully, it's not going to take that long. We're only going to present two lists each. Um, unless you guys want to listen to us go through all... Nine of Josh's <laughs> lists. All nine that we have here, but I did, uh, like Dan was just talking about one output file I uploaded to our server. There's thousands of connections yeah. that I came the, up with. The <laughs> first time, yeah, the first time he tried to put this algorithm together to get to Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, he knocked out all the power in his block. So it was, it was nuts. It was like turning up the lights to go uh, hit the electric chair in the Green Mile. It was not fun at all. And we all forgot the sponge. Yeah, the, that's, that's uh, oh, the first day. <laughs> Lame. <laughs> no, that was good. <laughs> no, the first time I did run this up, Dayton was, uh, had, had a power failure, and um, the internet basically dropped, and IMDB called me up and was like, dude, stop. Just yeah. Stop. <laughs> they honestly thought they were under a DDoS attack. So that being said, we're going to present two lists apiece, and like usual, we're going to take turns. We're going to vote on the list and we're going to like mr smith goes we're not going to filibuster but like mr smith we're going to argue our point we're going to argue why you my list should be voted on or why tom's list should be voted on or why josh's list should be voted on as we usually do so uh with that being said uh i'm ready to start presenting lists if you gentlemen are i am ready to go All right. Well, Tom, we're going to start with you since you came up with this destination. You get the esteemed honor of presenting the first list. Well, the honorable second senator from Ohio accepts the nomination from the first senator from Ohio. So I'm going to go with my first list. I'm calling it the cheater's way. Nigel, you had a much better name for it. I think it was, what, the history way or something along those lines? No, I think um, I called it... uh, Kings and men. Yes, yes. Because this one, uh, the connecting theme are politicians and kings or nobility, with the exception of one. And that's the reason why I call it the cheater's way. Because to get out of it, number one, I need to use Wyatt Olaf from It Chapter 2. So that would start off the list but from it chapter two we take scars guard and go to anna karenina karenina i don't know it's russian but from in anna karenina is jude law who was also in a political film all the king's men anna karenina is about russian nobility so that's those are connectors there politicians nobility and I was surprised when I learned this. Anthony Hopkins is in All the King's Men with Jude Law. And I completely forgot that a young Anthony Hopkins is in The Lion in Winter, which is a great film. Again, deals with uh, the king of England and his wife. Um, And playing the king in that film is Peter O'Toole, who was also in a film called Lawrence of Arabia, which deals with a British spy who essentially uh, goes to the Middle East to say, hey, revolution guys, do that thing. And in that film, Lawrence of Arabia is also Claude Rains, who was in Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. So that is the cheater's way. I might be a little biased because I technically, quote unquote, also came up with this list. Mm-hmm. Um, I I kind of like it. It does follow a theme, you know, uh, mm-hmm. king. It's politics and kings and and whatnot. So it it follows a theme, and it, I kind of 
okay with getting using it chapter two because it lets us put a bow on the field trip to Kingtown. Like, like we don't leave that hanging, and then we move on to the campaign trail. Mm-hmm. Josh? Josh, I like the list, um, but unlike Nigel, I have reservations going through it chapter two. I get that getting to 1939 through from it is difficult, and there's more adult actors in chapter two. Mm-hmm. Um, and as much as I enjoy it chapter two. I'm not a huge fan of using that one as a uh, as like the first step. It's so out of place in any list that you're going to come up with with the theme. But mm-hmm. uh, beyond my reservations with it, chapter two, I have not seen a one of these movies, with the exception of Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, and I may not have even been old enough to remember watching that one. The only one I even recognize on that list is Lawrence of Arabia. So I I, I really have nothing to say beyond that. It looks like a good list. It could be a good list, but I don't know anything about those movies. And on this one, I will also add and subtract my thoughts. I'm agreeing with you about It Chapter 2 being a dirty way to get out of It Chapter 1. It does leave a bad taste in my mouth. Unfortunately for me, both of my lists have at least one film that do not fit the theme. It's just the hard reality of trying to get to a 1930s film. But I can at least attest for A Lion in Winter, Lawrence of Arabia, those films are magnificent, especially Lawrence of Arabia, which also you will see one Obi-Wan Kenobi, once again, wandering around in a desert, uh, being a mentor to someone, uh, which always a plus. Mr. Smith, also I've seen. I've only seen that once, but that's the destination. There's no avoiding that, but I promise you're going to like it. Anna Karenina, I've never seen, but it seems interesting. It looks good. And All the King's Men, I've never heard anything about this film. If I'd heard of it, once upon a time, it in one ear, out the other. It's got some A-list actors, though. Sean Penn, a couple others. At least the quality of acting will be there. Whether it's any good or not remains to be seen. On this one, if we pick it, awesome. But I can see it, too, being like the one that just... Mm, it's like drinking a good beer, but there's that film of brewer's yeast right on top you gotta get through and it's just yeah. so that that was, that's my list and now i turn the floor over to again the other senator from ohio dan i'll let you be the cream in this oreo and let you give your list next i guess i don't know how i was going to segue that better than that <laughs> it's all right it's all right we know the best words Anyways, <laughs> I do have another list that does also use it chapter two. I will save that one because I feel stronger about this one. This one is tentatively right now called a history lesson, and, and I'll explain how it's a history lesson. But anyways, it starts with uh, taking Jeremy Ray Taylor from it and going to 42, which is the movie about Jackie Robinson. Mm-hmm. From 42, we take Harrison Ford and go to Raiders of the Lost Ark. Okay. From Raiders of the Lost Ark, we take Paul Freeman and go to The Dogs of War. Mm-hmm. And from The Dogs of War, we take Jimmy Stewart and go to The Big Sleep. This is where Colin we're going. Colin Blakely. Or Colin, I'm sorry. We take Colin Blakely from The Dogs of War and go into The Big Sleep. My bad. And then you take Jimmy Stewart from The Big Sleep and go to It's a Wonderful Life. And then you take Beulah Bondi from It's a Wonderful Life and goes to Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Now... Yes, it does have three Jimmy Stewart movies in it, and it does not violate the rules. Maybe violates the maybe it violates the spirit, but it does not violate the rules. And then we've we've actually never established the rule that we can't have the same actor in a movie more than twice. We've just said we can't use that same actor more than twice or more than. Honestly, I don't I don't have any issues with that. It doesn't violate the rules. It's not like that was your only option to get from A to B, or in this case, D to E. Now. The reason why I'm calling this a history lesson is twofold. A couple of these movies are not, well, one's a historical drama, which is 42. The other one is historical fiction, which is Raiders of the Lost Ark. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some history there. Also, Raiders of the Lost Ark takes place around the same time that Mr. Smith Goes to Washington takes place. But then there's the Dog of- Universe? Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's, yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's just like how Saving Private Ryan exists in the same universe as The Longest Day. I or see Sam- what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, and then also the Dogs of War. Um, I had to look up that movie. That it's actually more of a Christopher Walken film, but it's a movie about mercenaries that go down to a fictional African country and depose the African dictator, so that this uh, rich British guy can mine the gold or silver or something in the area. It sounds very colonialism. <laughs> so, you know. Um, and then uh, the, the last three movies are Jimmy Stewart movies, and I thought it would be nice to let our audience get familiar with Jimmy Stewart, see some of the bigger films that he was in. And we might not have an opportunity like this come mm-hmm. by in a while where we go and watch movies that old ever, mm-hmm. you know, again. It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah, technically it's a Christmas film, so we could do that uh, at Christmas sometime. I'm just saying, that's why I went with this list. I definitely like it. I definitely know I would like uh, to see 42. I'm a huge fan of Chadwick Boseman. I thought 21 Bridges was a fantastic film, and I think that, that he's a great actor. Like, I didn't know about this movie until after his uh, passing. So hearing about it, I'm like, okay, that sounds like a movie I really want to watch. I definitely am curious about seeing that one. Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, it's a classic. And then the other remaining films on that list I'm very familiar with, only because they've come up on my uh, lists a lot the past week or two. I, yeah, hats, I, hats off to Tom for actually coming up with a list that didn't go through the big sleep, because almost every one of them had to go through the yeah. big sleep. Yeah, that's a, that's a difficult one to get through. Because Mr. Smith Goes to Washington definitely is a difficult movie to get to. But no, this is a good list. I would totally be okay with this list. Yeah, it's a solid list in my opinion, too. Uh, Dogs of War is new to me, too. So, But you could say Christopher Walken. I say, eh, that's okay. I dig yeah. Chris. Thank you again, 42. Uh, I've been wanting to see that for a bit. The only, I guess negative on this one would be it's a wonderful life just because it's a christmas film and it feels more like a christmas destination film i I kind of agree with you on that one like i i looked at a couple of my lists to go through that movie Mm -hmm. so i could keep jimmy stewart from being a connection film or connection to a film this Mm -hmm. way i would feel less dirty about using jimmy stewart coming out of mr smith goes to washington but Mm -hmm. there is not a lot of movies that i could find that nope can't use Jimmy Stewart mm-hmm. um, to and from that. Yeah, and again, I can't, I'm not throwing stones in this glass house. I started my list with It mm-hmm. Chapter 2. So I, I'm a sinner as well. But, we all are in this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But overall, I, I'd say this is a positive list. This has more pluses and minuses, definitely. And the theme is good, history and historical. I love Raiders of the Lost Ark. Come on, who doesn't? Nazis, I'm sure, wouldn't, but they don't count in this one. And so, yeah, this one's, I think, I I tip my hat to you, Nigel. Okay, and I will say this about Raiders. In my honest opinion, it's the best pure action film ever. Well, yeah. I guess another, like, negative, well, I'm not saying negative, but reason why I'm not really probably not leaning so heavy in this one i've seen raiders and wonderful life so many times mm-hmm. same here i've seen raiders so much i could probably write the script from memory mm-hmm. um but it's such a good film like it just mm-hmm. raiders is so good mm-hmm. nothing I'm wrong with embarrassed that to say i don't think i've seen the movie all the way through in one sitting what Ooh. Say, oh. same way uh dan hadn't seen shawshank redemption all the way through interesting yeah Ooh. Okay, like it's that... one of those movies I've started watching a lot with the intent on finishing, mm-hmm. but I don't think I've ever actually seen, at least not in recent memory, any of the Indiana Jones film all the way through. Oh, Ra- well, sitting. Raiders is is one of the good ones, like one of the mm-hmm. really good ones. Like that's mm-hmm. that's Spielberg and Lucas at their best, and um, uh, John Williams. Oh, I don't deny that it's a good yeah. film. It's just one I don't think I've seen all the way through. Okay, well, I'm glad you guys like it, um, but. We still have more to get through, so Josh, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you. I humbly accept the uh, floor. So I am going to go ahead and present my list called The Synonyms That Are Crime and Politics. It has us leaving it via Jaden Martell to Knives Out from 2019. From Knives Out, we follow Chris Evans to what would be our first MCU film in Spider-Man Homecoming. From Spider-Man Homecoming, we would follow Michael Keaton to the best election movie, probably bar none, that is Batman Returns. And I know any of our listeners know that my history with that movie. This is where it gets very similar to your list, Dan. We follow Batman Returns via Christopher Walken to the Dogs of War. Dogs of War through Colin Blakely to Big Sleep. Big Sleep Jimmy Stewart to Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Basically everything involves crime or politics. Mostly crime. (laughs) (laughs) 
<clears throat> Nigel, do you want to give your input, thoughts, comments? Hated it. I'm just kidding. Actually, I kind of like the list. I don't have a problem with any of the movies that are on it. I actually haven't seen Batman Returns in a while, so I'm curious as to how it has aged in comparison to the current climate of comic book movies. But it is kind of funny. I was well into my adulthood when I realized that Batman Returns was a much darker telling of a, a penguin-centered episode of the original 60s Batman show. Mm. So, oh, really? Yeah, it is. There's an episode of the original Adam West Batman show where the penguin's running for mayor, and uh, Batman's trying to stop him, so to speak. Not stop him from running, but like figure out why he's running. But the Batman Returns, the plot is a much darker telling of that episode. So anyways, I'll, we'll get to that if we ever get to that movie. And then, yeah, the rest of the list is similar to mine, Josh, so I haven't seen that. Knives Out, and I haven't seen Dogs of War, Big Sleep, or Mr. Smith. Oh, wait, no, I've seen Mr. Smith. I haven't seen Dogs of War, Big Sleep. Yeah. And so for me, I love Knives Out. It's one of those films that I went with some friends, and he had seen it, but his girlfriend hadn't, and I hadn't. So he was actually watching us watch the film because it's one of those things. It's very cleverly done. Yeah. And I, I really enjoyed it. Like, I'd, I'd seen it, and I almost forgive Rian Johnson for Last Jedi because oh, no, this, it's such a good film. Mm, this was his middle finger to the mouse. I think this is what I can do when you guys do not stand on my shoulders and try to drown <laughs> me as I'm swimming. <laughs> well done on his part. The Spider-Man Homecoming and Batman Returns are what kind of, like, put me really on the fence on this list. Nothing against it, Josh. Two superhero films in a row kind of... Mm, seems a little weak for me and when one of those films is batman returns i know we gotta go through a clunker sometimes to get to a ferrari but oh boy yeah i will say batman returns does not hold up as well as 89 batman batman 89 still in my opinion holds up oh i think it's gonna be hot garbage batman i put that on there just because i partially because of how i have uh talked about it in the past episodes we've had but, like, I really don't want to watch that again. But at the same time, I'm kind of curious to record my thoughts on it after yeah. having not watched it in, you know, almost 28 years. Well, you know, Burton was kind of, um, I don't want to say handcuffed because he really wasn't handcuffed. But they, they put limits on Burton in 1989. And then, obviously, 89 Batman was this huge mega hit. So Warner Brothers was like, oh, man, this... Tim Burton guy is great. What can he really do? And they didn't restrain him at all in Batman Returns, and they're all like, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if any good came of it, we got Batman the Animated Series. That right. That's true. That is true. Right. But, and uh, we got all those awesome, cool Batman action figures. So well, I tried to get it to fit an election theme. Mm -hmm. So Batman Returns does have the penguin running for mayor. Like, I would have to say... If I could find a different connection to Batman Returns, not going through Spider-Man Homecoming, I would rather do that. But I wanted to come up with a list that had Batman Returns in it, and this was the literal only way. Mm -hmm. Literally, that is like the only way I could find. <laughs> no, again, it, the connecting theme is solid. I, I'll give you props to that. It's, not all lists are going to be the ace. Well, again, this a is going to be... This is, yeah, these are difficult movies to get to from and mm -hmm. to so yes, and even, uh and oh, plus we haven't had an mcu movie yet so like no we haven't it's it's going to happen eventually so <laughs> why not now i see your logic there like i said i don't hate the list but it's not the strongest list you've ever presented i yeah i, I know selection section number two my lists were pretty hot garbage so no but you did nail it on the field trip to king town okay i well, did, I, did. I, made it, I made it up that, for that one but that that's what happens though, because see, I nailed it perfectly on the road to Independence Day. And yeah. then my selection section list for number two for the Sink or Sim Summer Tour went out very good. <laughs> so I was like Editor note. Past episodes and roads can be found archived on our firepit.podbeat.com website. Go back and listen now. All cut up. Thank you. I guess that's what it is. It's like it's like baseball. You're considered successful if you fail seventy five percent of the time. So <laughs> Right. But, yeah, so that's my uh, <clears throat> first list. So let's uh, round this uh, last turn and go back up to Tom for your second list. Okay. Uh, thank you, Reginald. And this one I dedicate to you because I kind of borrowed a bit of your algorithm for this list. So this is 
tentatively called the Josh List, and also could be considered um, Kings and Politicians 2.0, because a lot of it is politics and nobility. Because it starts off with Skarsgård and Anna Karenina, and then goes into All the King's Men with Jude Law. And in All the King's Men is one gangster mofo, James Gandolfini, in The Last Castle, where he plays a prison warden who has to watch over one belligerent military. It's a military prison, too. Oh, yeah, I remember that movie. Yes. Yeah, me too. And, yeah, and it was one. in theaters. I remember seeing it on uh, HBO, but it was in theaters. So I got that one because it has Robert Redford, who was in All the President's Men, which, of course, is about a pair of just reporters doing something that happened in 1972 no one remembers uh something with nixon and watergate i don't know i don't remember the whole story something about water going through a gate and nixon wanted a, more than his fair share of glasses of water and people got pissed so mm -hmm. yeah he, he wouldn't share the water he gated it in I, yeah I, I, i'm starting to remember it now but in that film was one jason roberts who is in another film called by loved possessed which has very little to nothing to do with politics <laughs> unfortunately but thomas mitchell was in that film and he's also in mr smith goes to washington <sighs> i like this list if i had to choose of my two lists this one i liked it's because it doesn't go through it chapter two but by love possessed yeah i know it's weird for the nominee to kind of foo-foo his own list but this one, not only does it not really fit the theme, it's going to be a hard film to find, guys. I've never heard of this film until Josh's algorithm found it. I don't know if we're going to be able to find it outside of the dark web. So there's that. That's another reason I went and added to the list those movies that connected to Mr. Smith mm. that are accessible. <laughs> It's a good idea on your part, Josh. So it, that's the only linchpin I see being a negative on this. But for the most part, the ones I've seen, all the presidents men, I own that film. I've watched it so many times. It's amazing and so, so relevant. The Last Castle, if you haven't seen it, it's definitely good. The rest... I've not seen, well, aside from Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. So based on the virtue of them being new and some of them being fairly interesting, if we picked this one, I'd be quite okay. But if we didn't, because of all, my love possessed, I, again, I wouldn't be surprised. So other thoughts, you guys. Well, I will say this. I Googled it a second ago. My love possessed is on Amazon and included with Amazon Prime. No shit. Yeah, so in, a, in on Amazon Prime, you can do watch parties. So if we didn't have to use Sync Lounge that night and we could all sign into our Amazon accounts, we could do a watch party and do watch of Lo uh, by Love Possessed on that. So we don't have to worry about going into the realm of pedophiles and racists. Oh, wait, I'm not talking about Netflix. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> goodbye, Burn. Netflix ads. Yes. <laughs> no, we don't have to go into the realm of racists and pedophiles by going into the dark web to try to find this film. It's on Amazon. Hey. Only slightly less evil than the dark web. <laughs> Josh? Well, the first two movies same as your last uh, list i'm just like eh, i don't know anything about them i do remember watching the last castle back in the day i do enjoy that one all the president's men man, really anything with robert redford in it spy games is one of my absolute favorite films Ooh. with him and brad pitt um I may have got the name of that wrong i think it's spy game yeah i love robert redford i think he's a fantastic actor and i loved his scenes in the mcu i don't think there's any movies that i really don't like of his that i haven't seen i haven't seen all the president's men mind you um but I love Possessed. I have no idea. I have no comment. I will say this. All the King's Men has an 11% on Rotten Tomatoes. So we do have a potential Pathfinder. <laughs> Swash, no, 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 no. No, Swashbuckler has like a 60% on Rotten Tomatoes. This is an 11%. These are This is Pathfinder numbers. So... Oh, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no, guys. Oh, no. 
Ooh, I'm rethinking both of my lists now. Oh, no. You know, Tom, maybe you can go back and present my third list. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Swashbuckler has a 44% on Rotten Tomatoes. Pathfinder has a 10% on Rotten Tomatoes. Ouch. And All the King's Men has an 11%. So apparently it's in the middle of those two. Ouch. (laughs) Yeah. uh, Hey, look, we, we said months ago when we started this, we weren't going to just do bad movies. We weren't going to just do good movies. And these, we know that these lists are going to have a bad film somewhere in them. It's just almost, they're almost unavoidable. I will say that if we can get through all the King's men, the last castle and all the president's men are awesome movies. I've never seen by love possessed. I've never heard of it until Tom said it a second ago, mm-hmm. but I mean, Whatever. <laughs> then we get to well, we get to just Smith, be another so. one of those movies where we don't really pay much attention to it and just give our own thoughts and opinions on the state of the MCU. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah. I will turn the ch- the floor back over to Nigel. Nigel, what's your second list? Okay, this one I call uh, the horrors of politics. The horrors of politics. Yeah, the horror. Yeah, Josh, write that down. It's H O R R O R S. I suddenly lost interest in this list. Yeah, it's not, not, it's not the horrors of politics. It's not about that CD strip club down the street from the Capitol building. I'm bored now. <laughs> no, the horrors of politics. So it uh, cheats a little bit. It goes through It Chapter Two, and then it takes Jaden Martell from It Chapter Two and goes to Crimson Peak. With Jessica Chastain. Uh, incidentally, who's the uh, connector from It Chapter 1 to It Chapter 2? I'm, oh. I mean, I'm yes. assuming Skarsgård. <laughs> yeah, Skarsgård. My bad. Who's who's the connector from It Chapter 1 to Chapter 2? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, Nigel. I didn't mean to... Uh, Jessica, Chastain, Jessica Chastain to Crimson Peak. Doug Jones to Batman Returns. Christopher Walken to The Dogs of War. Colin Blakely to The Big Sleep. And then Jimmy Stewart to Mr. Smith. Dang, half right. that list seems really familiar. Right. <laughs> yeah, doesn't it? Okay, all right, all right, all right. Like, I'd have to say, this is a good list. Crimson Peak is another Guillermo del Toro movie, but I think he actually directed that one. Mm-hmm. I recently, it's one of those ones where the trailer, it came off super creepy. I got, I watched that movie uh, within the past two years. I don't know exactly when, but I, I watched it and it was okay. Like, it did a really good job establishing atmosphere. It had a couple of creepy scenes, but overall it wasn't really that impressive. Nothing I'm in a hurry to watch again. Okay. Uh, you know my thoughts on the rest of that list. Not a bad list, obviously. I mean, I yeah, used half of it and another one of mine. I used half of it, too. And it actually, there was a couple of different connections if you swap out a couple movies. But it took us through how the West was won. And, Josh, I guess you and I had the same thought at the same time. I was thinking how the West was won would be an easier would be a movie to get out of Mr. Smith and go into stay yeah. tuned to, yeah, figure, stay to find tuned. out <laughs> spoilers spoilers but so yeah um I just I, I decided to go with this list and, and they all do kind of follow a theme it chapter two is a horror film Crimson Peak is a horror film Batman Returns is well it's a horror film <laughs> it's a horrible it's a horrific film. film yeah it's a horrible film but it also has politics in it because of the penguin running for mayor and all that mm-hmm. um Christopher Walken, Dogs of War. I mean, mercenaries deposing governments so a rich British guy can mine the silver. Mm-hmm. That definitely sounds, you know. And I can't remember what The Big Sleep is about. The only thing I remember about The Big Sleep is it's a remake. It's the the, the big the version of The Big Sleep we're going through with Colin Blakely is a remake of a 1940s film that actually starred Humphrey Bogart. Yeah, that's why it sounded familiar, because also The Big Lebowski riffs a lot from The Big Sleep. Yeah, we're, I think, going through the 1978 version, and okay. that's a Robert Mitchum movie, and Oliver Reed and Joan Collins and Jimmy Stewart. It's either a remake or it's a continuation of the original 1946 version. That's the only thing I know about The Big Sleep. I don't really know what the plot is. I think Robert Mitchum's a detective or something like that, so it's a film noir style mm-hmm. movie. That is my list. Um, if I had to pick of the two of my list that I want to do, I would go with the first one because it doesn't go through It Chapter 2. I'm kind of in the same boat as you guys. If we have to go through It Chapter 2, I'm okay with it. 
because, like I said, we can use it to segue out of the field trip to Kingtown and onto the campaign trail. Mm-hmm. But I would rather save it chapter two for like field trip to Kingtown part two or something like that. Yeah, and I'm I'm with you on this list here. My thoughts: it's it chapter two is a little it'll work. It gets the job done, but if we cannot, that'd be great. I've yeah. never heard of Crimson Peak. I keep thinking of another film when I hear that title. I'm not uh, Crimson Tide, but something like Twin Peaks. That's what I keep thinking of when I hear Crimson Peak. So I don't know why to be getting in for that one. We've already discussed Dogs of War and Big Sleep. I've seen some of the classic Bogart Big Sleep. Not all of it. I think I fell asleep halfway through and then I had returned the DVD because it was <laughs> past due. Uh, not Not that the film was boring. It's just... I was coming off a third shift and I was just tired as hell, but I'd be going in half blind with this. I wouldn't be like spoiled if I saw this film and be like, oh, this they did it so much better with the Pumphrey Bogart version, derp or derp. I wouldn't have that poisoning me. Batman Returns, we all know all of our opinions on that. We'll round out things and go which list of each other's we prefer uh, once Josh is done with his. But uh, um, just spoiler alert, this one, no offense, Nigel, not the strongest list. Not not to be that guy. Yeah. All honesty, I don't think uh, any of these lists are creme de la crop, if you get my drift. Because <laughs> we had to make a lot of... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? We had to make a lot of concessions to get to Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. This We're just not going to have the best themes in this list. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's even with the list of movies that I added to uh, try to keep that theme. So far, our lists have been pretty solid. and They're all going to end in a great destination. Yep. So we at least got that one. But Josh, I think you have one more list. What's number two for you? All right, number two of 4,763. Um, <laughs> yes. I call this one best of a bad situation. We go from Jaden Martell to 2016's Midnight Special. I mean, we all remember that film, right? It's the top it's of the, my uh, yeah. sci-fi film that involved powers and something with the government. I don't know. It Actually, I've never heard of it until I pulled this list up. But apparently government's after a kid with powers. I don't know. That's just what IMDb said. From Midnight Special, we get out through Kirsten Dunst to Wag the Dog, the 1997 comedy where uh, they come up with some fake conflict to overshadow a presidential scandal. Comedy air quotes. Oh. But uh, it's classified as a comedy drama. From Wag the Dog, we follow Willie Nelson to 2008's Swing Vote. The uh, Kevin Costner movie where his character is the deciding vote in a presidential election. So, so two mm-hmm. election-themed uh, or political-themed movies. From uh, Dennis Hopper, and I would have to say that this one would be up for battle to be the best movie in this list. I, I could hear the arguments for being as good as, if not better, than Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, solely based off of uh, pop culture. So we follow Dennis Hopper to 1967's Cool Hand Luke. Oh, God, that's such a good film. I have never seen it, but I've heard nothing but great things about it. I actually know people who've named their kids Luke because of that movie. Not Star Wars, because of Cool Hand Luke. Like It's one movie I really want to see. But we follow George Kennedy from Cool Hand Luke to the 1965 The Flight of the Phoenix. Um, Not the 2004 one with Dennis Quaid, the original one. Um, this is the one where they crash land in the Sahara Desert and they build a plane from the remnants of the two planes that crashed or whatever, and they fly it out of there. I watched the 2004 remake back when it was new, and it was okay. So I'm curious to see this version of it. And obviously, from Flight of the Phoenix, we follow uh, Brigadier General James Stewart to uh, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Nice. So this list contains two movies that have over an 8 rating on IMDb. Good. Nice, nice, nice. So who was the connector from Wag the Dog to Swing Vote? Willie Nelson. That's right. That's right. I forgot he was in Wag the Dog. Yeah. Yeah. And he's in long enough. He counts. Yes. Wowzers. Okay. I've seen Wag the Dog. I've seen Cool Hand Luke. Those are very good films. Wag the Dog is so relevant, Mm -hmm. especially now with the internet being what it is. Oh my 
God, that's going to be a depressing yeah. watch for everyone involved. Oof. And Cool Hand Luke also, because very relevant even today. So you've picked a good list on this one, Josh, but there are two solid just get a drink movies because you need it to get through. That's Ooh. why I call it best of a bad situation because every single one of them is about trying to get out of a bad situation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I think I am IMDb uh, Midnight Special. Doesn't it have Kylo Ren in it or something like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Adam Driver is in it too. I yeah. had a couple of lists connected or going through him, but I think I liked this one the best. Like I'd have to say, out of all of my lists, this is probably number yeah, one. Yeah, this is a really good list. I'm, I've been on mute the whole time. You guys didn't hear a damn thing I said. Uh, <laughs> like, because you were just why saying, aren't they listening to me? <laughs> you were just saying like Adam Driver, and I'm like, yeah, it's got General Zod and Kylo Ren in the same movie, and like no one said anything. I'm like General Zod and Kylo Ren. Oh, I'm on mute. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, I mean. Not not to be rude against us, but we do that to you a lot. So I kind of figured. I kind of figured. I'm still paying my penance for coming up with a banger list for the Road to Independence Day. Yeah, so, that's what you get. That's what I get. <laughs> um, no, Josh, this best of a bad situation is awesome. Cool Hand Luke is a really good film. I haven't seen it since I watched it with my dad ages and ages and ages ago. I've never seen Swing Vote, and I haven't seen Wag the Dog since last time I watched it was right before the 2004 election. Because it was it's like it was one of those movies like oh, I watch it because it's election season, and then you watch it and like politics are terrible and everything sucks. Yeah, yeah. I think I saw it in ninety seven, ninety eight. So I have no memory of it, but remembering it, it's it's not a half bad film. Yeah, it's a good movie. It's a really good movie. It was perfectly timed for that moment in history too, which we'll talk about if we ever do watch it. But oh yeah, yeah. No, Josh, this is solid. Yeah, this one's a good wow. one. Weeks ahead of time I still probably couldn't come up with a list this good. Damn. I know, but your second list was really good too. The one that had all the King's men or I mean uh, all the president's men and uh, which which was that list? The Josh list? Yeah, all the King's men, The Last Castle. Mm -hmm. Those are good movies. Never seen Anna Karina. Never heard of by Love Possessed. Do we want to uh Make a decision on which vote based off these six. Well, let's take a break and let's go over the pros and cons of the, the six that we've presented. Okay, and, sounds good. All right, well, I'm going to step away, gentlemen, and yeah, we'll be back. Sounds good. Fantastic. Welcome back to another special edition of the Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and fellow pollster, Tom. And of the three hosts of the fire pit who were surveyed, all of them said that you are their favorite listener. But, you know, let's just keep that between us. And thank you for joining us in this special episode of the fourth in our selection section episodes, where we step aside and find out where we're going and how we're getting there. We've just come back from our field trip to Kingtown and are ready to get to work on starting on the Whistle Stop campaign trail, looking at all the battleground stops that will get us from here to Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Really excited about this one. Personally, I picked this film. I've been championing this one for a little bit. And I'm really glad that we were able to find a way to make it happen. I'm not going to brag too much more. I'm not going to keep you here too long. I just want to take some time, give a special shout out to our first ever sponsor, Rob's Custom PCs. He sponsored us through the field trip to Kingtown. And it's thanks to Rob that I now have a rig that can handle the recording and editing that this podcast deserves. And if you ask nicely, he can set one up for you too. You can email him at robscustompcs at gmail.com. 
That's Rob's Custom PCs, all one word. And you can also find a link to his Facebook page on our Podbean site. Just toss him a line, a little setup, something fun. And if you want to reach out to us directly to get a fine ad of your own featured, or if you just have anything else for us, just email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. It's just put fire pit in the subject line. And also what you're emailing about, whether it's, say, sponsoring the podcast, or destination recommendations, connections, or general thoughts or questions. And I'll read it, send it to the rest of the team to read, who will send it on to the rest of their teams to read, who will send it on to their teams to read, and on and on and on until the end of linear time. And that email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I at gmail.com. But these sections won't select themselves, now will they? Time to get back to work. Thank you all for listening. And as always, good luck. Cool, 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 cool. All right. So I guess we need to go through each of our uh, lists and figure out which one we're going to be using. Okay. I'm just going to say if uh, we don't use one of mine, I'm quitting this podcast for at least an hour. Okay. We'll have it be the hour after we wrap up. Okay. <laughs> I have, damn it, Dan. Now I, can't, now I lost my train of thought. I think if we're going to champion any one of our lists that we presented i would have to go with my second list just because it doesn't go through it chapter two it doesn't have some of the like lawrence of arabia or lion in winter those are just wow great films but i'm okay with saving those for like other destinations especially lawrence of arabia oh, that, that would be deserves... a good destination film yeah yes, it would be i, I... And if I'm going to champion any of my lists, just to prop up there, mm-hmm. I, I I vote on my history lesson list because again, doesn't go through it chapter two, has some pretty good movies in it like Raiders of the Lost Ark and Forty Two. Mm-hmm. I've not seen Dogs of War. I know that it has technically three Jimmy Stewart movies at the end of it. I don't know if that's cheating or not, but we've established um, that that wouldn't be cheating. Honestly, I think two of the movies in my list could be destination films. I think Raiders of the Lost Ark could be a destination film, and I think It's a Wonderful Life could be a destination film. I like the list, and if we go with it, I'll enjoy it, and I do want to see Dogs of War. When I looked it up to read the description, I'm like, this movie looks kind of interesting. That and I like Christopher Walken. I will watch that man chew scenery up all the time. So I've always wanted to develop a good Christopher Walken impression. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Like, this could be a good chance for Josh to Christopher Walken. Yeah. And like, I mean, if we go with this list, yeah, Raiders would be a good destination film. But then again, so would Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Both of them are stone cold classics. But, but I will I will say I'm going to prop up my second list as the one that I'd like to see voted on more than the first one. But bookmark that first list, Nigel, because, again, almost all of those are destination films. And yeah. as we go along, we're going to need that list. For sure. Um, if I had to champion any of my lists, I would definitely do best of a bad situation. I think that's the one list that I would really want to watch over the two I presented. That's just a damn solid list. Okay, so we're going with, Tom, you said your second list? Yes, the uh, the Josh list. The Josh list, best of a bad situation, and then my list, which was history lesson. So I say we take those three and we figure this out. Obviously, we can't really, you know, say I vote for my list, you know, because then we just Mm -hmm. never vote for a list um honestly nigel no offense to your list uh, or to my list um josh's best of a bad situation like a, it's wow that if it's a theme perfectly we don't go through it chapter two and there are some classics on here it's just damn rock solid I th- I think if we don't go with my list, if we go with best of a bad situation, I think we still win. This is a good. This one's got my vote uh, for absolute sure. The only one I don't know about is Midnight Special, but that's. I mean, we're going to take our chance no matter what list we go with. Might as well with that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say best of a bad situation is 
a pretty good solid list. There's some classics in it, like Cool Hand Luke and Mr. S- well, Mr. Smith's in all of our lists, so that's our destination. <laughs> but there's some there's some classics in it, like Cool Hand Luke and and Wag. I thought I think Wag the Dog's a really 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 good movie. I've never seen Swing Vote. It has a 36 percent on Rotten Tomatoes, so yeah, it hey, doesn't hey, look very good. And I it remember when it sure. came out, people were yeah. like, "This is not a very good film." I think that Midnight Special and Swing Vote would be the two dead calms and swashbucklers yeah. of this list. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to sound dark or morose, but I think Dennis Hopper died shortly after Swing Vote came out, and that's sad. And um, I'm pretty sure this movie killed him. So, I mean, seriously, the guy was in Mario Brothers, and this was the one that did him in. So, <laughs> I couldn't laugh at that. I know. <laughs> So I'm just saying it's got a 36% on Rotten Tomatoes. So it's got a potential to be a really bad film. And our audience just loves us being miserable. Um, it's got it's got some potential, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, in Midnight Special, seems like it's a decent film. I, I quickly perused the trailer while uh, you, we were on break for a second. Looks like a decent film. Uh, I really like Best of a Bad Situation as well. You know, if we don't go with my list, I would be perfectly happy with that. No offense to Tom. I really do like your second list, the Josh list, Tom. Mm-hmm. Really liked it. The only thing I'm not looking forward to is All the King's Men. That that 11% on Rotten Tomatoes, that's like, that's, mm-hmm. Pathf- that's Pathfinder bad. Yeah, yeah. That was another one plus the second to last on my list, which now I'm blanking. By Love Possessed. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, it's on my list and I com- almost forgot about it. So, no yeah. you're, no offense taken, Nigel. I would definitely say that I would rather uh, Dan's list over Tom's list. Yeah, just that, that, that 11% on Rotten Tomatoes has is, is got me just going, oh man, that's Batman v Superman has like a 30% and it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like, mm-hmm. what, what, what happens when you take 20 more percent away uh, <laughs> although it would be great for our quiz section <laughs> oh boy yeah <laughs> these are all 10 star reviews like oh there's, there's none <laughs> yeah there's none um so yeah i mean that's just pathfinder levels of bad but our audience loves watching us suffer so maybe all the king's men would be a classic episode at least mm. um but it still looks like it'd be a hard movie to get through and I've never even heard of By Love Possessed. And when I Googled it and was looking at the description on Amazon, I'm just like, I don't want to watch this movie. I'm not trying to make out with a chick in the 1960s, so I don't. It's like that one band that goes on before the headliner, but they really screwed up the order. They should they should have been first. And you're just like, well, I guess this is the piss break. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, got so. it's got pretty decent reviews on Amazon. But my mom would probably really like this film. And no disrespect to my mom if she's listening to this, she's not. But yeah, I mean, you you might like the film and think it's great, but I just really don't want to watch it. But I would have had to do it for the podcast. So if we're not going with my list, I would go with Josh's list. And I just, I say that with as little bias as possible. No, yeah, right, if I didn't right. do my list, I would definitely pick Dan's list because 42, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, mm-hmm. I'm curious about the other three movies, but I honestly would feel that Wonderful Life would be a much better destination film. Well, that's okay. Yeah. It's yeah. A Wonderful Life is a classic film. It's not going anywhere anytime no, soon. No. And then the other movies on my list, like Raiders of the Lost Ark is another film that could potentially be a destination movie because that's just one of the best action movies of all time. And mm-hmm. it's legitimate classic. Dogs of War has got Christopher Walken in it. I mean, he's in like everything in the 90s. So we'll definitely get to him at some point in time. And 42 has got Chadwick Boseman and Harrison Ford as well. So we'll get to those guys again. at some Yeah. Point. Oh, definitely. The, yes. Especially the newer movies. When I say newer, I mean newer than 1939. Um <laughs> Well, th- there's a good chance we're going to hit them up because I definitely want to watch 42 and I think I really want to watch it with you guys. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm totally OK going the best of a bad situation. It's got yes. the potential to be another road to Independence Day where like almost every movie is awesome. Yeah, but at the I'm, same time, I don't have high hopes that we're going to enjoy Midnight Special and Swing Vote because like sink, the Sink or Swim Summer Tour, both of those movies, none of us have seen. Oh, so, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Our track record. <laughs> holy crap. Yep. <laughs> oh, no. But so, uh, yeah, given our track record, I think that uh, those have the opportunity to be terrible films and definitely the dead common swashbuckler of the best of a bad situation. But again, it'll expand our uh, repertoire. So, Mr. Speaker, I say we put it to a vote here and now. Which routes and roads shall we be going on this campaign trail? I'm filibustering this vote. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Oh, my God, he's reading. <laughs> <Damn it, laughs> All right. So, Thompson. What is your vote? Best of a bad situation. Nigel? 
best of a bad situation. And I will go ahead and parrot that and say best of a bad situation. Well, so, there you said it. You've heard it here. And uh, I will opt myself out of the next one since I got two in a row. Because I know um, we talked about this in the past. Oh, yeah. If you get two in a row, you got to sit the next one out. Yeah. Oh, did you? Oh, that's right. That This is two in a row for you. Yeah, oh, wow. Well, he's, he's also cheating. He's got his Terminator AI. Yeah. Thing, you know. And that's going to, like, I'll still, oh, God damn it. Especially for our next one. It's like, I want to do that one. I can't present a goddamn list. No, you know what? <laughs> screw that. Screw that stupid rule. You come up with a list, too. It's fine. I, it, that's right. a dumb rule. Again, well done, sir. Well done. This is going to be a great journey. Well, Josh, for the um, inevitable and eventual hype section, would you like to give us the audio in your best Josh voice? I will uh, defer that. To Nigel, seeing as that on his list, it was me who was speaking. So I want him to speak for me. Nigel? I thank the senator from Kansas who speaks in a Tennessee accent but lives in Ohio. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> so, okay, so we take Jaden Martell to Midnight Special. Midnight Special via Kirsten Dunst to Wag the Dog, to Swing Vote via Willie Nelson, to Cool Hand Luke via Dennis Hopper, to The Flight of the Phoenix via George Kennedy, via Jimmy Stewart, to Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Very good. Bravo. Bravo. And that does it for our fourth selection section. That is hard to say. Selection section show. Uh, we thank you very much for listening. We'll see you all next week as we move on down the campaign trail, starting with Midnight Special from 2016, starring Kylo Ren and General Zod. I'm not looking up their real names. Do they have real names? Not relevant. Remember, you can find us on Spotify, Amazon, iTunes, Google, or anywhere you get podcasts from. And be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps our channel out. And if you'd like to interact with us, we have a Discord. The invite link can be found at firepit.podbean.com. Um, it's on the left-hand side under our link section or in this episode's description. So join us there. We can talk amongst ourselves. Uh, feel free to give us suggestions for paths we can take um, or possibly future destination films. Or if you want to, you could just tell us how much our opinions suck and we'll promptly ignore you. Yes, and if you want us to directly ignore you, you can directly email us. The email link, of course, mentioned in the interspersal segment. Jen, send us uh, whatever feedback you have or suggestions for movies to watch or destinations to aim to. We do appreciate the feedback from all our listeners, and we do hope and look forward to interacting with you. Special thanks, as always, to Sync Lounge for hosting our weekly viewings. It's a free service that allows for people to sync with whatever they're watching from their shared Plex library. It's what we've been using, and hopefully you can get some use out of it too for your own watch parties or podcasts or whatever. And uh, guys, guys, special shout out to our very first Discord member. Oh, yes. I saw that today. I was so excited. So uh, thank you, Tarek Thorne, for being a listener and joining our Discord to join in on the discussion. We've already spoken today, and he did say that he does enjoy the selection section episode. So he's getting a shout out in uh, this one. So thanks again. He's an old guild mate from back in my Galaxy of Heroes days. So, Tarek, I hope you enjoy this episode. And I'll give a special shout out to always uh, Peggy, friend of the channel. I'm so glad that you're enjoying the episodes. And she also mentioned today uh, while I was talking to her that she enjoys these selection section shows because she likes to hear us debate which movies to go on. So thanks for listening, Peggy. And another special shout out to Rob from Rob's Custom PCs. Thank you for sponsoring us. And uh, thank you for the shout out on social media today. And thank you, everyone, for listening to this fourth in our selection sections. Until next time, I've been Tom. I've been Josh. And I've been Dan. Thank you for listening. This has been a production of <laughs> Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Good luck out there.
Not only are we taking Jake Martell to Midnight Special America, but we're going to take Kirsten Dunst to Wag the Dog, and then Willie Nelson to Swing Vote, Dennis Hopper to Cool Hand Luke, George Kennedy to Flight of the Phoenix, then all the way to Jimmy Stewart to Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Yeah! Grab your tiny flags and hop on the bandwagon, because we're hitting the campaign trail. Join Dan, Tom, and Josh on their Whistle Stop campaign trail. Shaking hands and kissing babies all the way to Mr. Smith goes to Washington. Ask not what the fire pit can do for you. Ask what you can do with the fire pit. Yeah!